Hey guys, I'm about to tell you the story of Romeo, a dog who had been suffering from aggression problems for about a year, and how in about four days, we were able to take him and get him basically over his aggression without using heavy correction, treats, um, or anything of the sort. You wanna hear that story? I'll tell it to you. All right guys, so this is Romeo. Uh, Romeo has had issues for Oh, about a year, I believe, if I remember correctly, his owners are telling me. Uh, issues with aggression, to the point where, if he even saw a dog, 100 yards away, he would freeze, get super intense, and start, come on, buddy, um, and start really just getting in, uh, until the dog got even a little bit closer, then he's lunging, barking. You know, some pretty intense reactivity, um, maybe even bordering on some, some heavy aggression. They never got him really close to other dogs because of his intensity. Um, I do believe like it did lead to a fight one time if I remember the owners telling me correctly. But anyways, we're at a dog park now. Um, and as anybody who knows me knows, I really hate dog parks as far as a place for socializing. Um, they're a really bad place for that. But as far as working through some aggression, this is a good place. So now you might notice that he's wearing some training collars and how in the beginning I said that we didn't use any heavy correction in order to get him over his aggression problem. And the fact of the matter is we didn't. Um, you know, on my e-collar, I'm on 15, which is pretty light. His normal working level is anywhere between 10 and 15. Um, and so getting him over the aggression was not about pounding him when the aggression came. When I say pounding, I mean, come on, buddy. Why are you eating all that, huh? Um, you know, when I say aggression, I'm, or, you know, when I, it, we didn't use heavy correction. And so to help him get over his aggression, it was two main things. Number one was getting some really, really great mindset. And this is where so many dog trainers and so many, um, so many dog owners go wrong. See, the question that comes up all the time is, uh, you know, my dog gets aggressive when we're on walks or he gets aggressive when somebody rings the doorbell or he gets aggressive when when he sees the neighborhood dog next door or he gets aggressive with this, this, or this, right? And so what do I do in those moments? Um, and this, this kind of misses the boat. And like I say, a lot of dog trainers, they approach fixing aggression from this, this standpoint too, where uh, the dog is being aggressive. What do I do in that moment to get him over it? And the answer is almost nothing if you're doing things right, in most cases. Now, there are some cases where we've got to do something in those instances. Um, but most of the time, if the dog has become aggressive, we're too late um, and we didn't, get the, we didn't get the dog's mental state correct. Now, here's the wonderful thing about dogs. Their mental state, they're totally willing to get that mental state where it needs to be quick. Like I say, within about three or four days, Romeo was almost 100% over the aggression. I saw like a little hint last night, um, and we're about a week in right now. I saw a little hint last night, but it went away like almost immediately. And I think with, you know, a little bit more repetition, it'll be completely gone. But anyways, um, it's all about creating this mindset. You see, um, picture a seesaw. On one end of the seesaw, we've got structure, calmness, um, happiness. On the other end of the seesaw, we've got chaos, frantic, hectic. Um, and this is a seesaw that never balances, ever. It's a seesaw when one side is up, the other side is down, just like a regular seesaw. Uh, but it never balances in the middle. These two ends never weigh each other out perfectly, never balance each other out. And so what happens when you have a dog, like Mr. Romeo here, that is showing some aggression issues. When he's showing aggression, the side that's up is chaos, hectic, fear, anxiety. All of those things are up, right? And what that does is it pushes structure, calmness, happiness down. They don't coexist. They cannot coexist. And if you think about it, you cannot coexist in those states of mind. I joke with people a lot that, what would it take for you to go out and actually punch somebody in the face. For the majority of people on planet Earth, it's gonna take a lot. <laughs> you know, they would have to feel incredibly threatened. 
Um, they would have to feel very violated on some level. Now, obviously, there's always that uh, certain portion of the population where that's not true, but the overwhelming majority, they would have to feel violated on, on, on a level that is unbelievably uncommon. You know, the average person might not ever get in a real fight in their entire life. And yet you go everywhere and you see dogs who are very much like this in the sense that they're, you know, they're getting in fist fights all the time. You know, they're screaming, they're yelling, they're fighting, they're lunging, they're snapping. And so why is it that they do and you don't? Why is it that Mr. Romeo here, when he would go on walks and just see a dog, he was ready to punch the dog in the face? Hypothetical, well not hypothetical, uh, metaphorically speaking. Why was he willing to do that? <clears throat> and the answer is mindset. So how do you create a mindset that is that lends itself to not, not punching people in the face all the time, not getting in fights, not getting in shouting matches every day with everybody? How is that possible? Well, it's a little thing called impulse control. And when I say impulse control, what I mean is the ability to control these baser impulses that come to us. All of us have impulses that are base. You know, I'm hungry. I uh, am angry. I am um, happy. I am excited. I am, you know, all of these impulses come to us. Now, if somebody cannot control their impulses, they really struggle in society. If they're so happy that they're jumping around, giving everybody hugs and high fives, like, it's like, whoa, this is weird. Like, you know, you, uh, this is this is crazy. This is something reserved for when your team wins the Super Bowl or something like that. And you just, uh, you know, you got a good parking space. You know, your, your control of impulse is kind of weird here, buddy. Or um, the opposite end. You know, somebody maybe, uh, uh, somebody says, hey, that was a dumb idea. And now you're wanting to fight them and punch them in the face, you know. Our impulse control is what allows us to control, you know, something that might make us a little upset, something that might make us happy, and not let those emotions, those base emotions go crazy. Or... You know, like I say, even getting even more base, things like hunger. We have impulse control based around our hunger. So when you're hungry, it's not like you're running out in the forest and trying to kill a squirrel. Like you've got impulse control that, okay, I'll wait a little bit, I'll go home, I'll cook up a grilled cheese sandwich. You know, whatever it is, right, we've got impulse control. So how do humans get impulse control and dogs living on this seesaw here, how do they not have that impulse control? And the answer is simple, barriers. Um, barriers create impulse control. In front of everything that you want in life is a barrier. In front of that grilled cheese sandwich was a barrier. You had to earn some money to get the cheese and the bread and the butter. And you had to wait and you had to go home and you had to take 10 minutes to make it. And so in front of every impulse is a barrier. In front of that house that you want to buy is saving up money, going to work every day, um, and, you know, being frugal with your money in front of, um, the college degree, the high school diploma is years of work and effort and sacrifice in front of everything you want, big or little is a barrier. And when you learn to overcome those barriers through patience, through work, um, through dedication, what you gain in the process is impulse control. And these dudes, these dogs that have issues with aggression haven't had those barriers in front of them. Now, in most cases, the owners have tried um, and often tried really hard. Romeo's owners did. He went to other trainers. They put in effort. They did everything they could. And yet they weren't having an easy go of it. And frankly, not to sound crass, but this is why um, we charge thousands of dollars to help dogs work through big challenges like this because we've got a system that works, um, that in days can create impulse control where other systems might fail. And so what is it? I mean, it's different with every dog, but in reality, the moment I started working with this guy, I started putting barriers in front of the things that he wanted and needed. He wanted um, to pull on the leash. We stopped that pretty quick. Said, no, nope, you can't pull on the leash. He wanted to not come when called. So we put a barrier on that and said, well, you want to run off? Nope, we're not going to do that. He wanted to rush through doors. 
Well, we put a barrier on that and said, no, you're not allowed to rush through doors. Um, he wanted to jump. Well, we said, no, you're not gonna jump. Now, this wasn't about being domineering because on the flip side of that, we taught him different ways. We said, instead of pulling, walk kindly next to my side and it's really fun. And now he really likes that. Instead of running off, come when I ask you to come and we're working together and there's positive motivation, uh, you know, positive reinforcement and you'll like it. And he does. Now he really likes coming when called where when I first started working with him, oops, sorry, um, he did not want to come near me at all. Um, in front of every impulse that he had that was negative, we put a barrier and said, you know, you can't do that. Instead, we're going to do this. And the opposite is positive and fun. So in doing that, what happened very quickly is his mindset shifted. And when his mindset shifted, he started living in a calm place. That, that was his, his natural go-to. So few dogs have a natural go-to of calm. Their natural go-to is the doorbell rings, they, they get out of control. It's time for food, they get out of control. It's time for going on a walk, they get out of control. Like they're constantly going in and out of this hectic, chaotic state of mind. And when they're in that state of mind and now they're presented with something that makes them fearful, like another dog in his case, they lose it. You know, and you see the dogs absolutely go nuts and get aggressive. So I've only seen his true aggression come out one time. Um, and I've now had him around dozens and dozens of dogs and I've only seen the aggression kind of start to come out. We were on a walk last night, like I say, and a dog was really approaching him and was like hitting the end of its leash and was about to bark at him. And then he kind of barked, but because his mindset was in such a good place, a little pop on the leash, pop. And he was like, ah, oh, okay. And he calmed right down. Um, he never would have been able to do this. Like I said, there's dogs off in the, you know, dogs off a hundred yards. He wouldn't have been able to do this a week ago because he did not know how to control his impulses. Dogs don't wake up one day knowing how to control their impulses or even knowing that they have a problem. Dogs are not going to go out and read Tony Robbins and say, well, I'm not feeling good about my life. What do I need to change? They're not going to do that. They're going to give into their base instincts. That's fine. They're dogs. Um, but we as humans can step in and say, look, here's your instinct, but we're going to do it a different way. And the way that we're going to do it is we're going to have impulse control um, in front of the things that we want and need. We're going to live calm. There's going to be tons of times we're going to go play ball. And we're going to have fun, go on a jog, do those things that, you know, that, uh, wrestle, you know, all those things that we want to do. But other than that, we're going to live in a much more... Um, calm baseline you know respectable type way such that when things approach dogs cats whatever the things are that make you go stressed you don't have to like change your state of mind so much you already know how to control your impulses so that's where i say when i use the e-collar and the training collar here i've used them on very low levels to teach obedience and impulse control and that gets me to the point to where he doesn't even want to be aggressive or if he is wanting to revert to something like that, um, that uh, is very easy to get him back into shape. So, so, come on, buddy. Here he is at a dog park. He's able to, like I say, we're not on the inside. We're just on the outside where there's other dogs. But he's able to be calm, relaxed, even happy. Romeo, here. Oh, good boy. Good boy. And so without even any heavy correction, you can just fix his mindset and help him start to feel more comfortable. Now we're a weekend. You can tell there's a little bit of hesitation, like he sees the other dog and his ears go back a little bit. But, hey buddy, yeah. But now he's paying attention to me, where before, when he was stressed by another dog, even at 100 yards, his owners told me they could not even drag him away from anything. Romeo. Oh, good boy. Oh, good boy. And now just his name gets him back into focus. Romeo, hey, buddy. That's a good boy. And uh, he's living happier, and soon his owners will be living happier, too.